uh, in your registration bags, you should have a pen and you should have got a ballot to vote for your director, as well as a, uh, a voting card, a voter card. Uh, so you may need that this evening, and those are located in your registration bag. Uh, you'll see in the front that we're going to do things a little differently this year to where we have stationary microphones set up. We've got one uh, in each of the middle aisles. Uh, certainly when it's, when it's uh, adequate for members to, to speak to the, to the board or to the chair, certainly if you would just get up and stand in, in line behind the microphones, uh, you will be addressed and be able to talk uh, to the chair. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Mike Moore from the Rock Falls Baptist Church uh, for, to present a vacation. Yes. I bring you greetings from the Rock Falls Baptist Church located in the suburbs of Elkhorn, Missouri. Also want to wish you on behalf of the church, Happy Mother's Day. We want to be the first to wish you that. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful this evening for all that you have given us. You have given us the gift of life and you go with us day by day. You have given us the gift of yourself to help us. You have given us the gift of each other to encourage each other and support each other and aid each other along the way. You have given us the gift of the earth and all good things that are in it. We pray this evening, Father, that your spirit will teach us always to be grateful, that he will open our eyes to see what you are doing in the world. You have given us all good things necessary for life. We pray that you would help us manage responsibly what you have given us. Give us wisdom to manage our lives, to manage our world. Help us to make the decisions this evening that will be good for us and good for our neighbors and good for your creation. We pray this, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Moore. At this time, if you could please stand for the flag presentation by the American Legion Post 58. And if you would continue to stand after the flag presentation, our very own Viva Christensen will sing the national anthem. this time, I'd like to introduce our board president, Dennis Falk. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Viva. That was good. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's uh, annual meeting. Uh, looks like the weather might get a little damp here before long, but uh, 
Hopefully it won't be storming before we get out of here. First I'd like to call on uh, Kenny to give us a report on quorum. Okay, we met quorum at five o'clock, so this is an official meeting. This time I would like to get everything rearranged here. Read the notice of the uh, annual meeting. It appeared in the rural Missouri in April of 2015. And the Co-op News official notice, the annual meeting May 7 at the Kearney office, 1000 West Highway 92. This time I would call on the reading of the minutes, unless this can be waived, if someone would like to make that motion, or if you want it read, we can read the minutes. Okay. Do you have a motion, and do I have a second? All right, your voting card. Everybody, if you've got a voting card, all those in favor, raise your card. Those opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Financial report. If you would, I'd like to point out a few things in the uh, annual report. If you'd turn to uh, pages four and five in the annual report, you will notice uh, from 2014 to from 2013, operating revenue went up by about $370,000 to $58 million plus. Total operating expenses were also up about a half a million dollars to 54,000, 54 million plus, leaving a net operating margin of 3.3 million, which was down 183,000 from the previous year. After other non-operating margins and capital credits from other organizations, our net margin for the year was $6,473,000, which was down a little bit from the previous year. On the balance sheet on the other side of the uh, page, you'll notice that our electric plant and service is now $127 million, which is actually up $5 million from last year, giving, giving us total assets of $155 million plus. Actually, on the, the uh, next couple of pages, there are some good charts and graphs which are very uh, informative. Might point out on the expense side, it breaks down what uh, percentage our expenses are, and you'll notice on that that about 62% of what uh, our expenses are is for the cost of power. One other thing that I would like to point out on that page, on the, if you flip over to the next page, you'll notice that the uh, annual investment in our plant has gone up. We've spent some more improving the uh, lines in the last few years. And then if you'll skip over a chart or two, you'll notice as a result of that, on the reliability part of it, our outage minutes per member have gone down dramatically. So that's part of where your money's going is to help improve service. Are there any questions concerning the uh, financials? If not, I would accept a motion to approve, to accept the financial report. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor, raise your cards. Opposed? Thank you. This time I'd like to introduce the rest of the Board of the Directors to you. They're all scattered around here, so I'll ask them to stand up as I introduce them. From the uh, North District, we have Steve Atkins. Steve's from the Plattsburgh area. Steve's way over there. Debbie Stewart from Lathrop. Debbie's right up here in front. Teresa Wren from the Turney area. Teresa. Representing the South District, Kendall Davis from Excelsior Springs. Elkhorn, I guess, actually. And Richard Kramer from Kearney. Where's Dick? There he is, over there. And Gary Shanks from Kearney. Representing the uh, West District, we have Jerry Haig. Jerry's from Dearborn. Larry Leachman. There in the middle, Larry's from Platt City. I'm also from the West District and I'm from the Weston area. So that's your board of directors.
We do have one employee that retired in the year 2014, Gary Wyant. Gary was uh, hired by Platte Clay on June the 16th of 1992. He worked as a foreman until retiring on August the 4th, 2014. Previously, he had served in the Marine Corps in Vietnam and worked 19 years at another co-op in Northeast Missouri. Gary has four children, he's married to Mary. So if you know Gary and the next time you see him, thank him for all of the years that he had helped here at Platte Clay. We do have some special guests in attendance this evening. I'm not gonna to try to name all of them, but we do welcome you for, uh, and are glad that you were able to join us this evening. Two young ladies standing up here in front, they are our youth tour winners this year. The youth tour is a program that uh, all of the co-ops in the state of Missouri participate in. It's open to sophomores and juniors. They write an essay, and then the top six of those come in, give an oral presentation, and the two winners of that competition have a trip to D.C. They're leaving in about, what, three weeks or a month to, uh, for their trip to D.C. So congratulations to Margot Morris and Haley Seba. Black Clay also awards a scholarship every year. We give uh, three $1,000 scholarships, one to a member or member's son or daughter in each of the three districts that make up the co-op service area. Scholarships are available for undergraduate students with a grade point average of 2.5 or higher who, who are or will be attending accredited colleges or trade schools pursuing an associate's or bachelor's degree to be used in the electrical field. We do have a selection committee that selects those individuals. The committee is made up of a representative from each district. This year's scholarship award winners from the North District, Isabel Maddock. She's attending Lathrop High School and will be attending Stanford. From the South District, Baylor Moore, attending Kearney High School, and she'll be attending the University of Missouri in Columbia. From the West District, Mackenzie Hoskins, she attends Platte County High School and will be attending the University of Missouri in Columbia also. So congratulations to the scholarship award winners. <clears throat> Pathfinders is an organization. Their mission is a, to serve as a women's advisory group to Platte Clay Electric and the board of directors mission to develop, improve, and strengthen the co-op through better member and public relations and to assist and its, to assist the co-op and its members to meet the challenges of future competitive marketplace. One of the things that they do help us with also is annual meeting. If you noticed uh, in there passing out all the food, I think you've seen a lot of the uh, Pathfinder members in there. I would like for the Path members, Pathfinder members that are in here, if you would please stand I'd like to thank you for all that you do to help us out during the year. Thank you very much. Another group that we have that helps here at Platte Clay is the Focus Group. Fo the Focus Group members provide feedback and their impressions on a variety of subjects and issues. The purpose of the group is to provide qualitative information which is shared with the Board of Directors. Each fall, Platte Clay begins soliciting for new members. The online membership form is on the website, so if you are interested in serving on that committee, please go to the website and put your name in. Another committee that we have that's new to the uh, co-op is the uh, Solar Committee. There are approximately 40 members of that committee, and their mission is to observe the uh, new installation we have out here in front, to observe those results and learn with the staff about everything about there is to do with solar. So we're looking forward to what comes out of there. So thank you to both of those groups.
Another group I'd really like to thank is our employees. Here at Black Clay, we have 75 employees. That number is the same it was, as it was in 1997. The only thing, we've got 40% more meters now than we had then. So these people are a dedicated group, and we do appreciate everything that they do. If you look around the room, you'll see the, they've all got shirts like this on, and I'm privileged to be uh, included as far as wearing the shirt, but I definitely don't do uh, near as much work as they do. They're the ones that are out there helping you keep uh, the good service that we have, and we do appreciate everything that they do, and I'm glad to be able to uh, thank them for all the service to Platte Clay, so thank you. In preparation for the election, there's a housekeeping item. Pursuant to Article 4, Section 4 of the Bylaws, a Committee on Nomination has been appointed within the 30 to 100 day window prior to today's annual meeting. Jeff Couchman has been elected Chairman of the Committee. The Committee has had posted at the Principal Office of the Cooperative at least 20 days prior to today's meeting a list of nominations for directors. Consistent with the bylaws, additional names will also be invited from the floor today. Such nominations, once opened, shall not be closed until one minute has passed during which no additional nominations has been made. No member may nominate more than one candidate. Regardless of how nominated, Article 4, Section 3 of the bylaws provides the following qualifications to remain or to become or remain a director. It must be a member cannot be employed by an electric cooperative and cannot have financial interest in another cooperative or who has a primary business engaged in selling goods or services to the cooperative in the following areas. Selling electric appliances, plumbing appliances, futures, or supplies to the members of the cooperative. It cannot be an incumbent or candidate for an elected public office with a salary or compensation in excess of $100 per year. It cannot be a cooperative employee or have been a Platte Clay Electric cooperative employee any time in the last seven years. It cannot be convicted of a felony or entered a plea of nolo contendere in connection with a felony charge or indictment. This time I'd like to call on Jeff Couchman, chairman of the nominating committee, to give the nominating committee report. Incorporated, having met at the office of the cooperative in Kearney, Missouri on Tuesday, March 10th, 2015, do hereby respectfully submit the following members as candidates for directors for the ensuing three years. Same to be voted upon at the annual meeting of members of said Platte Clay Electric Cooperative Incorporated to be held on the 7th day of May, 2015. North District, Teresa Wren. West District, Dennis Falk. South District, Kendall Davis, nominated this 10th day of March, 2015. Thank you, Jeff. This time I'd like to call to the stage Gary Shanks. Gary's the Vice President. Since I'm a candidate this year, uh, Gary will be conducting the election. Looks like we have a good crowd here tonight. Glad to see everybody. Uh, as a matter of housekeeping, in accordance with the bylaws, uh, all candidates must and all can candidates nominated by the nominating committee as reported on by Mr. Couchman have met all the qualifications to become a, and remain a director uh, as specified by the bylaws. But this year, an additional candidate was nominated by petition. He is a candidate running in the South District. His name is John Graff. Mr. Graff uh, has also met all the qualifications to become a director as specified in the bylaws by verified by the cooperative. At this time, I'd like to introduce the uh, candidates, which is Dennis Folk from the West District, uh, Teresa Wren from the North District, uh, the South District will be Kendall Davis and uh, John Graff. As Vice President conducting uh, this year's election, I'm starting with a housekeeping item 
uh, of the bylaws and reading of the bylaws as it pertains to the nomination and qualifications of the candidates. Additional names will now be invited from the floor and such nominations once opened uh, shall not uh, be closed for until one minute has passed during which no additional nominations has been made. No member may nominate more than one candidate regardless of how nominated Article 4, Section 3 of the bylaws provides the qualifications to become a remainder director. It must be a member cannot be employed by the, uh, another electric cooperative, cannot have a financial interest in another cooperative who has a primary business engaged in selling goods or services uh, to the cooperative in the following manners. Selling electric appliances, plumbing appliances, futures, supplies to the members of the cooperative. Cannot be an incumbent or a candidate for elected public office uh, with a salary or compensation in excess of $100 a year. Is a cooperative employee or has been a cooperative employee for the last seven years. Cannot uh, be convicted of a felon or entered into a plea of no con contendary uh, in connection with a felony charge or indictment. As a member wishing to make a nomination or second a nomination from the floor, you must state your name, the cooperative service address, uh, member ID and all of which is included in your registration packet, uh, which have been conformed uh, prior to today, any discussion or action of the nomination. Are there any nominations from the floor? During this one minute pause, we will draw for five black clay fuels cards. Randall Bird. Is Randall here? Do we have Randall? Lyle Musman. Is Lyle here? Lyle Musman. <laughs> Jay Stryker. Is Jay here? Jay Stryker. Right back here. R.E. Woods. Is R.E. here today? Right back here. Wayne Bacon. Wayne Bacon. Richard Pennington. Is Richard Pennington here? Eric Robinson. Eric Robinson. Matthew Fisher. Right back here. Peter Kim. Peter Kim, right back here. Okay, this is the last one, Jeff Wolfer, right back here. Okay, that completes the nomination waiting period. I'll turn it back over to Gary. Nominations are now closed. If a nomination is made from the floor, refer to the procedure nomination from the floor. Uh, I'm going to ask the candidates now to come up that are running, which is Dennis Falk from the West District, Teresa Wren from the North District, and Kendall Davis and John Graff from the South District.
anybody up here? Looks like it. Uh, since two of the candidates are unopposed, that uh, be are asking they are elected by acclamation. On the voting, on your ballot, please select a box for one candidate of the South District. We need two volunteers to serve as inspectors for counting the ballots that are disinterested parties and have no relationship to the uh, candidates. Do I have any volunteers? But there's one. Should get on right there. In the blue shirt. Thank you. Um, also asking nominating committee Jeff Couchman to also witness the counting of the ballots. Okay. First we have Dennis Falk on the far right uh, from the West District. Uh, he's been a member of Plaque Clay since 1974. He's served on the board of directors since 1993 and is now currently president of the board. Self-employed farmer. Talis Dennis Springs to the board are based on owning and managing a farm more than 40 years in his leadership positions various local and state boards. Main issues he sees face, uh, facing black clay are wholesale power rates. Uh, the most uh, important thing to know about black clay, Dennis feels is that it's a cooperative owned by its members it serves. Dennis believes he is the best candidate for the West District of his experience in the election of cooperative system at the state and national levels. Next is Teresa Wren from the North District. Teresa is a senior uh, production ag officer. Uh, she holds a Missouri CPA certificate and a BS degree in agriculture economics from the University of Missouri and a BS in business administration and accounting from Missouri uh, Western uh, State University. Been a member of Plaque Clay since 98. She joined the board in 2014 to complete Ann Swartz's retirement term in 2000, retired in 2013. Skills bringing to the board include uh, business acumen, leadership, and, and team building capabilities, along with her many years' of experience working the cooperatives. She feels the, the biggest issues facing Plaque Clay are increasing government regulations and maintaining lower costs for its members. Most, most important things to know about Plaque Clay is how the cooperative operates and a, and a quality product. Uh, top-of-the-line customer service and the cooperatives encourages membership participation. Kendall Davis from Excelsior Springs in the South District. Kendall is the owner-operator of a welding company as well as a professor of welding and technology in the uh, instruction for the Metropolitan Community College of Kansas City. Kendall has been a member of Plaque Clay since 83, has been on the board since 91. Skills he brings to the board is 20 years plus of director experience, 25 years as a small business owner, and knowledge of electric industry issues and facts. Biggest issues facing Plaque Clay include the controlling cost at all times, making sure to provide affordable and reliable electricity in alignment with industry environmental regulations requirements. Important things to know about Plaque Clay uh, include uh, number one, the most outstanding asset in our co-op is our employees, staff, and many services Black Clay can provide. Next is Mr. Graff. John Graff is a software uh, engineer, small business owner, holds a BA degree in mathematics with a computer science minor from the University of Missouri. Uh, his diversified business includes e-commerce, real estate management, and agriculture. He has been a member of Pack Clay for more than 20 years. The skills John brings to the board are his business experience, including uh, project and product management of process controls and robotic applications uh, for the materials handling industry. Issues John feels are facing the cooperative implementing a, a smooth transition to an affordable, clean energy mix of generating uh, capacity, creating more alignment between the co-op's policy and the members' viewpoints and continuing to maintain the high quality of customer service in the future. Most important things to know about Plaque Clay and its members, it is member-owned. There's an excellent staff and employees who are primarily, primarily responsible for its successors and that member demographics are changing its service area becomes more suburban. John feels he's the best candidate because of his uh, strong technological, technical background and his computer technology software design and electronics application. He has a long time interest in energy efficiency and renewable energy sources including wind and solar. Uh, he has attended renewable energy and energy efficiency conferences, uh, toured wind farms, and has hand-on experience 
with photovoltaic uh, solar. He keeps current on renewable energy developments by reading the literature. There's your 2015 candidates. Done that? Okay. On explaining the voting, did I do this? On your ballot, select a box for the candidate South District. I've already got the volunteers. Oh, if the two inspectors can uh, please come to the administration table to, to the over here, uh, the podium for verification of membership. Upon verification, they will leave uh, Kenneth Brown to count the ballots. Would the staff please come forward to collect the ballots? When did we put ours in mind? Would the two pathfinders that were selected go with Kenny Brown to help count the ballots? Everyone get it get their ballot in the box? We we need Becky Jackson. Is Becky Jackson here? We need another Pathfinder volunteer. Somebody want to come help with the ballots, please? Okay, at this time I would like to introduce our uh, CEO, Mike Torres. Mike's been the manager here since 1997. He uh, came to us from Colorado. And in the time he's been here, he's done an excellent job, and we're glad that he is here. So, Mike, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dennis. And I'd like to thank each one of you for showing up tonight, uh, especially as we know the weather's looming. Out to the southwest of us here, uh, as the meeting was being conducted, as Dennis took care of his job and Gary helped with the election because Dennis is a candidate, I was checking my radar up here to see what was going on, and uh, we should hear the rain start any minute. I really do appreciate seeing everybody here tonight. I'd like to talk to you tonight a little bit about change. I will try to be brief, but before I talk about change, I'd like to talk about your cooperative and give you a little bit of an update on the condition your cooperative's in. Your co-op is in very good and excellent condition. If you look up on the screen, uh, what you have up there is our energy sales. And you can see the growth, tremendous growth, in industry, uh, in energy sales from 64 to 89 to 2014. From 41 million kilowatt hours all the way up to 573 million. It shows continued growth. And one of the major spikes that's happened in there uh, a few years back we had the addition of a couple large pumping stations uh, up just north of Plattsburgh. Uh, we call those in the industry and the Rural Utility Service, whom I fondly refer to as the REA, calls those an indeterminate load. They're a load we don't know they're going to be there. And you have to include them in your financials and in your rate structure very carefully. They can disrupt things tremendously. Uh, next slide, please. This slide's intended to show you what's happened with energy sales. This goes back a few years, and you can see how it peaks out about four years ago uh, and then starts dropping off. The last three or four years, we've had a decline in sales. That's due to two or three things. The major thing that's happening in there is those indeterminate loads hit an all-time peak a few years ago, I believe actually in 2011. And if we graph those against the rest of the load of the system, combined, those two pumping stations are equivalent to somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of our native or our base load for the cooperative. So you can see what happens if they start pumping and then they turn off. To some extent, that decline is because of the loss of load from some of those pumping stations. That's their indeterminate nature. Included in that decline is also the effects of our Energy Efficiency Demand Side Management Committee, which we're working with our GT Associated Electric. We were one of the original members of that committee that began 
in 2008. It's very successful, it's done a great job, and we embrace that thought. We understand and we know that wise use of energy helps us all. We understand that you don't want to have to spend any more for your electric bill every month than what you absolutely have to. We support that and we want you to use the energy wisely. The impact of the Energy Efficiency Demand Side Management Committee over the years since its inception has saved enough energy to power a city the size of Columbia every year. That's an impact and we're proud of it. Next, this is a graph I'm particularly proud of. Uh, this is a graph reflecting using 1964 as a base year where our rates could have gone and where they've gone to. And you can see how our rates are about half of what inflation is. I think we've managed the co-op well, we've held costs down, we take that part of our business very seriously. Lastly, I wanted to talk about equity just a little bit. You can see from 1964 how it's grown from 34 percent through the end of 2014 up to 49 percent, almost 50 percent. That's nice and good growth in our equity. And an old friend of mine used to laugh when he'd see that and would have conversations about that. And he'd say, Mike, you know how I kind of measure that? When I drive down the road for every 10 poles I pass, we own five of them. It's kind of a simple way to look at it, but it puts in perspective. So about half, about half of the assets here are owned by you, the member. You own them. Next, I'd like to talk about reliability a little bit. This is something that becomes more critical every day. 25, 30 years ago, this wasn't a big deal. People didn't get too concerned with it. That was prior to all the computers we have now, all the electronic devices we have right now that are driven by computers, that are dependent upon computers. It was prior to all the families and the businesses that were working from home, earning their income and their living from there. And you can see how we've driven down, uh, all the way down to about 82, 83 minutes per year per member. That's an average, outage minutes. Now, you may not have experienced that many minutes at your residence, at your home. That's an average of all of our membership. If you look at those last three years, there's a little variation there. There's 76, 83, about 81. Uh, within the statistical world, on the scale of where we came from, from 163, that two or three minutes variation could be buried in the statistics. It just could be a, an averaging thing that's happening on one of the lines. Lastly, this is a new graph I wanted to include this year and share with you. We've talked about it a little bit from time to time over the years. This talks about the total capacity that our power supplier, Associated Electric, out of Springfield, Missouri, has available to draw upon to supply you with your energy. You can look on the graph and see that coal is one of the dominant sources, 40%. Natural gas is the second, 44%. Wind is nine, 7% is hydro, and the balance up there, all of those combined are the resources that you have available to you. It's all of these things together that make up the energy source that Associated uses to deliver energy to us and to you. I wanted to close in talking about capacity and the update on the co-op by saying we do not anticipate a rate increase in 2015. Uh, that's something we've waited on a while. Uh, our power supplier Associated Electric, whom drives over 60 percent of the cost of operating this co-op, is still grappling with issues. 2016 remains a little bit more uncertain. It has a little more uncertainty with it. They're concerned about environmental regulations, new oversight conditions, and frankly, with the Environmental Protection Agency. One of the things I'd like to point out there on that subject, uh, Dennis and I were just fortunate enough to help represent the state of Missouri in Washington, D.C., where we, we met with our congressman and we studied some of the issues with some national experts and what the issues are that are facing our industry in the years to come. When we were there, we heard an example from our power supplier on one of the issues that they're facing and may have to deal with. 
and it has to do with the fly ash regulations and how they may be rewritten. This would be an administrative action coming out of the EPA where they would change the regulations by rewriting the standards. What they've been dealing with thus far when they talk about fly ash disposal, very similar to what they've done up at Thomas Hill, they have the same kind of an operation down in the Boot Hill for the New Madrid coal-fired power plant. They just finished a few years ago construction of a brand new fly ash pond and disposal area. That pond and everything about it was constructed with a 500 year period in time. The standard they had to meet said that it had to meet the worst conditions that could occur within 500 years. The EPA is considering changing that by making it a 2,500 year period, going from 500 years to 2,500 years. If that were to occur, the fly ash facility they've constructed would no longer be adequate. What we'd be looking at is tens of millions of dollars to reconstruct a new pond, to acquire new real estate to construct the pond on, a disposal site, and annual transportation costs to haul the fly ash from the power plant to the new site. That's just one example of the things that makes rates in the future uncertain for us and for our power supplier. Next, I'd actually like to get into talking about change just a little bit and what it means to us here at Platte Clay and hopefully by the time you leave, what it means to you. Within the context of your co-op, as an electric service provider, the purpose for which we were organized in 1938 and for the purpose which we still exist today, we are a capital intensive industry that takes a lot of money to fund it. If you look at your annual report this year, the one that Dennis was referring to a little bit earlier, it reflects that there, we have $107 million in net utility plant at the end of 2014. That number essentially only represents wires, poles, transformers, and meters. Yes, there's a few other things in there, but that's the essence of that number. That's what makes it up almost in its entirety. In addition to being capitally intensive, we're a long-term industry. Our assets generally are designed, constructed, and we expect them to last 30 to 50 years. Many of the facilities serving your homes and businesses are 35 years and older. When you think about that in the scope of the world, that's not a long time, 35 to 50 years. But when you think about it in the framework of return on equity, on return on investment, on rate of return, all of those things necessary to satisfy mortgages and to satisfy debt requirement, it becomes a different purposes. Decisions here at your co-op are made pretty slow when it comes to investments of that nature. At your power supplier, Associated Electric, those decisions are made even slower. You might even call them laborious when you're trying to work with them and expect a change and expect them to decide what they're going to do. What does all that have to do with you? What does all that have to do with change? What it has to do with you is your electric rates. It has to do with whether or not you can afford to buy a new home and still afford to pay your electric bill. It has to do with whether or not you can send your children to college, which college you can choose. Will you be able to provide for them some education? And it also has to do with you, as I look out into the crowd and see many people out there with the same color of hair I have, has to do with planning for your retirement. All of those things are critical to each one of you, and we know that. For business, it has some of those same implications and more. It has to do with product quality if you're manufacturing. It has to do with product marketability if you're manufacturing. And sometimes it just has to do with plain old survival of running your business and being able to earn a profit to pay your bills and support your family. We understand that. We understand that energy is a major part 
of your life and the lives of businesses in our area. Everything we do here at Black Clay and everything we're involved with, every decision we make, is driven with rates in mind and the impact that any change in electric rates will have on you and your homes and in your businesses. Earlier, I reviewed a pie graph, talked a little bit about generation capacity. And Cheryl brought it up again, thank you. Again, what I wanted to point out on this graph is the mix that Associated has. It's not strong or it's not dominant in one. It is dominant in one source of fuel that many call fossil fuel, carbon fuel. That's our coal and our gas. And the reason they use, it, use those is because they've been reliable, they've been affordable, they've been dependable, and they're compliant. Every one of these sources, every one of these power plants meets or exceeds by a substantial margin regulations and limits established by the EPA, the state legislature, Congress, and or the Public Service Commission as it may or may not apply to the individual power plant. But at the same time, we know that renewables are becoming a bigger part of what society wants, of what the membership here is interested in, and we know that likely it's going to become a bigger part of this mix as we go into the future. One of the things about this particular mix that I just heard yesterday, if you look upon this graph, you'll see wind up there at about 9%, and it combined of all the renewables, wind hydro uh, of about 14 or 15%, Associated has entered into a new contract for new wind coming out of Oklahoma. It'll be an additional 150 megawatts of capacity. When that's added to this mix, that's going to be to bring the total average of all renewables up to approximately 20%. We like what they did. We think that's forward thinking and not inconsistent with what they've done in the past. At the same time, we know that when you flip the switch in your homes or in your businesses, not only do you expect the lights to come on, you insist and demand that they come on. A quote from a DC think tank. All forms of electric generation have proven have positive and negative aspects. Technology will probably eventually declare the most preferred forms, but in a market economy, the options with less overall costs generally will be chosen above all of the sources. It's not clear yet which form can best meet the necessary energy demands or which process can best solve the demand for electricity. Renewable energy and distributive generation are becoming more viable in economic terms. However, a diverse mix of generation sources reduces the risk of electric price spikes. If you'll look in your graphs that are in the annual report this year, there's a graph in there, a pie chart, that looks similar to the one I've referenced twice here. That graph, however, is talking about how did our power supplier, Associated Electric, utilize its resources to supply you with energy. The numbers on that graph are a little different. They talk about 79% of the energy coming from coal, and that's true. They ran the coal generators a lot harder than they ran some of the other resources. And they did that because coal this last year was a very, very attractive fuel price to be used. That made more stable rates for you for another year and possibly a little longer. They make those choices day in and day out. And that graph in your annual report rep represents the utilization of these assets and the wise choices that they made. Knowing this, and all that having been said, the American standard of living, your standard of living, the standard of living in Missourians, which is the best and the highest in the entire world, is to a great extent driven by the energy that you consume, that's consumed by the nation and persons individually per capita. 
getting back to change. You probably recall, for those of you that were here last year, when I got up and started my discussion with you, I was pretty excited about the survey we just finished. At last year's annual meeting, 68% of you said that you would be willing to pay up to $15 more each month to combat climate change. And last fall, to a great extent in response to that survey we conducted here at the annual meeting, and because we knew that that survey we conducted here at the annual meeting was not statistically sound, there were many people that told us we didn't word the questions right, so we weren't going to get accurate answers from you. There were many people that shared with us and said, you know what, uh, you guys did such a poor job of writing those questions, we don't even think the folks understood the question. I went away shaking my head thinking, I think Black Clay's membership is a little smarter than that. So last fall, we conducted another survey. That one took the subjects that we gave them, and they professionally worded the survey, organized the questions to take out the problems that we'd created with the survey. Well, guess what? That survey kind of said the same thing. It said 62% of the membership wanted the co-op to develop and use more renewable, environmental-friendly energy sources. 62%. The one we held here at the annual meeting said 68. At the same time, it said 92% of the members agreed the co-op should use the most affordable, compliant sources at current rates. 65% of you also said they would like the co-op to get involved with solar. I get it. I get it. What all that was telling you, telling me was, you care about your environment, you care about your world, you care about climate change, you want everything you use to be compliant and follow the rules, but don't forget about the electric rates. Not 500 feet from you here tonight, out this door, is your solar farm. You may not look at it that way, but it is your solar farm. It's your pilot project. You own it. You own it. It's small enough not to have an impact on your electric rates, yet it's large enough to help the staff here at Platte Clay Electric, the co-ops in the state of Missouri, learn a lot more about solar, learn a lot more about distributive generation, learn about how it will integrate with the grid, how it will affect it in every way. It's here for you and for us as well to learn and to learn and be able to take that information and move on and do what's best for the cooperative and for you. Platt Clay's mission statement reads, and I quote, Platt Clay Electric Cooperative's mission is to provide quality electric service beyond members and customers' expectation while maintaining a sound financial structure, providing the most competitive rates possible, and not inconsistent with our own bylaws, which state, and I quote, to make electric energy available to its members at the lowest cost, consistent with sound economy and good management. We intend to stay the course. We intend to fulfill the commitment of the cooperative to you, the membership, while embracing technology and with every intention of incorporating change while keeping stable, affordable electric rates for this membership. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. One other thing that I would uh, like to share with you is we have uh, been investigating the uh, possibility of becoming an installer for solar panels for individual homes things to be able to uh, provide that service to our members. Uh, and just out of curiosity, I would I'd kind of like to see a show of hands, see what kind of interest we've got in something like that. If you, would, if you think that'd be something all right, that's kind of what we expected. Like I say, we are looking at that. We'd be, uh, 
we think that's going to be something we're going to be able to move on here and uh, we'll be letting you know. This time I'd like to uh, ask if there is any other business, any unfinished business or new business. If you have something, as Dave said earlier, we'd like for you to come to a microphone, state your name, where you live, and since it's kind of timely, we'll ask you to limit uh, your remarks to three minutes, please. Microphone A. Oop, it's A. Okay, try, there you go. There you go. Okay. Hey, I'd like to address uh, membership here as much as the chair. My name is Tom Jerry. My wife, Rebecca Grant, and I, we have a uh, been members of the Black Lake since 2003. We have a vegetable farm north of Washington Mill. Um, we rely on black clay for the power of our home, our greenhouses, our coolers. Uh, black clay is very important to us, and uh, we've never been disappointed. And I want to just talk about how grateful we are to the head of the staff here and of the organization. And um, is really second to that. I'm uh, sorry to delay the, the drawings for the prize. Actually, one of those might even be nice on the farm. Nice little buggy there. Um, but I don't have any prizes to hand out to the youngsters. Um, I would like to put forth a motion. And uh, this motion really addresses their future as much as ours. So in the survey we took last year, it was apparent that as members, um, we're all concerned about the next generation's future too. 63% uh, of us said that we should use more renewables, should be more environmentally friendly, that that is an issue. And um, as a group, we said that we should have a renewable future in black clay. Now as business owners, uh, I think we deserve to see a business plan that addresses this and, uh, and achieves this and, and will map it out. We already have some policies in place um, that address this. Our environmental policy states that we will periodically evaluate our environmental goals and policies. And I think now is the time to do this. This is the time of change. We don't have any written goals, and I think that we should do that now. So therefore, I uh, would like to present the following motion. I have a copy here for the reporting secretary to make sure that it's um, annotated properly. So, the motion is that the Black Clay Electric Cooperative Board of Directors shall direct that a comprehensive five-year plan be prepared to reduce our environmental impact as a co-op for utilization of clean, renewable energy and increase energy efficiency while keeping rates affordable. Uh, the draft of the plan presented to the members at least three months before next year's annual meeting. And then a final plan and recommendation of the board of where we head as a renewable future should be presented at next year's annual shareholders meeting for discussion and a vote. Okay, Tom, I'd like to ask if you'd be willing to restate that as a request to the board of directors since it's the director's responsibility to set policy as set forth in the bylaws. Um, we can have, if you would like to request that, we can ask for discussion from the group, and that would be on the agenda for the board to discuss. I'm sorry, I don't. And, um, Instead of presenting that as a motion, if you would request the board to act on that. According to bylaws, the uh, members at large elect the board of directors to manage the business. The directors are the ones that set policy. So, in that regard, this is a policy request. Is that possible? In a motion. Pardon me. This is a request to set a certain policy. Yes. Right. You, yes. You are. A, you are entitled to request that. Yes. But it, it wouldn't, it can't be a motion. No. And how will I request the board? In fact, you, well, you just have. <laughs> you just did. Okay. That's the point of order. Well, my, my ruling is that that is, that's the valid. Okay. 
way to handle it. And we, uh, is there any one that would like to discuss that? Well, you can speak to the request, yes, if you wish to do that. Oh, yeah. Right Still a name and uh, name and where you live, please. Gabe Greiner, Still, okay. East Ray, or these one ladies. Okay. Uh, I like this motion. I would like to speak toward it in favor of it. I guess. Sure. And then I would like for the board to pursue uh, a policy plan okay. that is consistent with what we presented. Okay. Well, then, if we have you already given a copy of that to, so we can have that. Right there on the end. Okay. Is that it? That's okay. That's okay. Any more discussion on that? The micro microphone, please. Okay. Name and where you live. Kevin Johnson, Platte City, Missouri, off 136th Street. I would like them to also submit what their definition of affordable is since they use that in the terminology. The ones that made the request? Okay. Any other comments? Gary Brown, Platt City, Missouri, NHH Highway. I would just like any work that's done in that regard towards that end to be sure it follows our bylaws which do say first and they will provide that co-op that end to provide the lowest cost provide the lowest cost energy consistent with sound economy. Now, I want that to be our first goal, is to be a low-cost, reliable provider. If we can do it without natural resources, uh, oil or gas, that's great. But our first goal should be to go by your bylaws, and that's reliable and cheap energy. If there are other political concerns, address them in politics, legislature, and enforcement. Okay, thank you. Can you... Microphone C. Leonard Hill, I live in the uh, Trimble area. I'm a member as well, and, and I support uh, support the board here. Uh, I think you're doing a great job. You look at the financial plan here, you're doing a great job. Uh, I would I would uh, just suggest the membership that that's what we have a board for. Let's uh, let's utilize them and let them uh, bring back some some offerings to us uh, as far as the proposal on the floor at this point. Uh, I don't think that we want to uh, we want to take our time when we're thinking this out. Anyone else? Okay. Any any other? B. Oh, microphone B. Hello. Okay. Uh, Mike McCollum, Hainesville Road, member. Uh, <clears throat> mine's kind of a little bit on the same, but quite different. Uh, as we go older and the house gets older and the kids are going away and we start to downsize, uh, we look at our utility bills as uh, we are in a declining pattern on our bill, we have a minimum and then the bill declines. We wonder if the board would consider uh, possible three multiple tier ascending rate. Those of us that do conserve should be rewarded, keep our costs down and our consumption down. And as new homes are built, a possible incentive for the new homes to be constructed with more efficiency knowing that the bill would reflect the other. Thank you. Okay. I'll let you reflect on that. Okay. Uh, I can I can talk about a little bit of it very easily. 
uh, may need a little clarification on some of the other one of it, uh, Mike. But uh, Black Clay Electric for many, many, many years has an energy efficiency department. We have an energy auditor. Uh, that energy auditor goes out and helps folks with their homes and businesses, help to determine where the energy loss is in their use up to and including their lights. And we make recommendations to them. And through Associated Electric again, there's even rebate money coming from them to help make those improvements to lower your electric bill, to help you use your energy wisely and help lower your bill over a period of time. Uh, within the rate structure itself, uh, that's kind of a tough thing. Anytime you have incentive rates, whether they incent the lower end of the scale or whether they incent the top end of the scale, and that would be called declining block or inclining block rates, it's kind of a tough place to do it because it's discriminatory in one way or another, if not within that rate class as residential only, as you compare it to the other rate classes, it causes a problem. We do support energy efficiency. We do help contractors working and every day, every year, and we believe in that tremendously. That's part of that committee that I told you Black Clay was involved with. We support that in every way. And in fact, uh, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna host that meeting here at your cooperative, and one of the things they're gonna do is look at our solar array, your solar array, in consideration of what the other co-ops around the state are doing. And they formed a new committee in addition to the Energy Efficiency Demand Side Management Committee. And when you speak to how much you use and should there be an incentive if you don't use much, that's what we in the industry call demand side management. How it's managed well on your side of the meter. But in addition to that committee, they're forming a distributive generation committee which will help to formulate ideas and better integrate into the grid in a fair way which will not cause different rate payer or cost class discrimination for DG and solar applications. So we're working on that, we're continuing to work on it. Uh, if you want to talk about it a little bit more specifically in a minute, I'll be happy to have you come up and I'll see what I can do to answer the rest of your questions that I didn't catch if I didn't get them. Okay, thank you. B. Okay. Gary Brown, Black City. Um, with regard to, uh, would, it, would it make sense to fully disaggregate our, uh, our rate base into the, the cost of facilities and service charge, and then the savings could be reflected in what you don't pay in energy, and that would help offset, you know, potential stranded assets from solar installations um, of a private nature? One of the things we have looked at it in that regard is splitting out the bill more on the demand part and the, the actual cost of service part and the usage part. So, yeah, that has been talked about. I don't know if you want to add any, what, yes, you do, I see. I, I do, thank okay. you. Uh, you know, it's taken us really 10 times longer to come up with the mechanics of bringing this energy array, this solar farm out here that you own up and being able to deliver energy up. It's taken us so much longer than Associated, the G&T, to think how it was going to impact them and get the contract set up. And it has, to a great extent, because of the complexities of the electric rate structures. Some of the very things that Gary just pointed out are crucial. For those of you that raised your hands and said you were interested in solar at your business or at your home, You've probably already looked on the internet, you've looked at the newspapers, you're watching television. And you know that around the country, there's a lot of discussion, there's a lot of disagreement, and it's all about who is subsidizing who. Who should be paying for this and who should be paying for that. That's part of why we want the Solar Committee to work with the staff here, so we can learn together exactly where those lines cross. We don't want you paying for your neighbor's electric bill, and we don't want them paying for the use of the transformer and the wire. It took us a little longer to get some of that together. We hope we've done a good job formulating this first rate structure. Uh, we know it's not perfect. We hope we didn't make any fatal mistakes. It may need a little adjusting later on and down the road. And to Dennis's point, what's going to have to come is more unbundling of our electric rates to show you the specific elements of cost and expense and every kilowatt hour that you use and that you're billed for so that we can identify and you can identify that you're only paying for what you use and what you need and not somebody else's. 
So we're working on that. Thank you. B. Okay. Good evening. My name is Bill Dane. I live at 102 West Shaman here in Carney. Arbitrary and capricious deadlines will raise your rates. Your job, as you stated earlier, affordable, reliable, electric, and you're incorporating, looks to me like aggressively now, the wind, the hydro, uh, and I'm sure you'll continue to do that. Uh, but arbitrary and capricious deadlines that are forced upon you, they'll raise all of our rates. Thank you. Anyone else? A highway, very close to here, five minutes away. I admire what you've done, and I admire how quickly and efficiently you put this together, because I've followed it very carefully, and I support what you're doing with the solar. Uh, I do have a question about the grid in general, and we haven't touched on it yet, but um, how prepared are we as a community for uh, security on our grid? And I know we try and get to a Nash, a bigger network. Um, are we prepared like to keep our area up and running if something happens in other areas? It's a little bit off of what this topic started, but I think it you know, applies to what some people might want to know to keep their homes and businesses going. And I appreciate you guys. I can do an awesome job. Cybersecurity is one issue that associated especially with their uh, generation plants and the transmission part of it. That's the, seems to be where the most effort is needed to, to protect that. But that's an ongoing thing. Yes, there are, that definitely is on their radar. Um, as far as that, our local co-op, we, it's not as much of an issue for us at the present time. And I'll let Mike add anything he wants to add. But yes, it definitely is a concern and something that we're, we look at. That's a very good point. Uh, one of the things we're fortunate to have here in Missouri is a conservatism. And as mentioned earlier, I came from Colorado, and I did. Moved here. I moved here for a good job with this cooperative. And probably more importantly than that, I moved here for the people I met around the area as I experienced Missouri in those first few weeks when I was getting to know Clack Clay and trying to find out if they were going to offer me a job and if I was going to accept it. I continue to say that and I'm going to say it forever. The folks here in Missouri are great people, they're good thinkers and they're conservative. And where that's all going, in Missouri we're fortunate. Our power supplier, Associated Electric, operates and owns, on your behalf, they operate and own their own transmission system. They're not tied in with independent system operators. And I don't want to get into a lot of this because it gets a little detailed and there's a lot of jargon. But that all started back in the 70s and the 80s through the Federal Energy Regulatory Council, FERC. And they started issuing some orders. They, th they had the idea that if they could pool everybody's assets in one pool and get somebody that was independent to operate those assets, they'd be operated in a fairer way. Well, there's a number of independent system operators in the area. The biggest and largest immediately and right here is MISO, Midwest Independent System Operator. There's also another one, ERCOT. What they're trying to do is force Associated Electric through regulation to put their assets, their transmission system, into this Midwestern grid. If that were to happen, Associated Electric would no longer be able to operate its own transmission system. What that means is we would be more vulnerable to the kind of failures you're talking about. The Missouri folks running Associated want to run their own assets. They appreciate all the help, but they think they're doing a pretty good job. We agree with them. In addition to that, the CEO and manager of Associated Electric has been a longtime member of an organization called NERC the National Electric Reliability Council. He has input on the guidelines, he has input on the standards, 
and he continues to speak for Missouri and for you. And as Dennis said, Black Clay Electric really isn't a part of that grid, but it can have an effect on us. We're in the best position as we can be in from anybody else around the country. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the James Lincoln uh, Rural Black County. Um, I don't want to take up anybody else's too much time, but we're going kind of fast. But. So, um, as members of the co-op, we own the solar farm? Correct. Right now? Correct. Well, can you help me understand why they're trying to sell me a panel <laughs> for 800 bucks if I already own it? Because you're not trying you to sell me part of a window or part of another power plant someplace. So why would I pay $800 to buy a panel? You, along with 18,000 other people, own the whole pan the whole array out there. If you want, in your particular case, the power exclusively for you off of one panel, then that would be yours. It's not everyone's. It would be yours. Whose decision was it to make it so that it would be an exclusive thing rather than a cooperative thing? Because we're a co-op, right? I, I don't understand why you pay it on the well, it, it doesn't have to be, okay? If we didn't sell any panels out of that array, power coming out of that solar array would be dumped into the grid and serving all 18 to 20,000 members, okay? That's a co-op. That's a co-op. At right. the same time, if you, and, and every month, you're still going to get billed for every kilowatt hour that you go through your meter. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. If you buy the panels, just like buying a car, buying a tractor, if you buy the panels, the output of those panels you will not be charged for for 25 years, which is what we anticipate the life of that panel to be. So you'll have no energy charge for anything coming out of that panel. You'll be different than the rest of the people because you chose to have an ownership in it rather than to use it cooperatively like the rest of the membership. Yeah, that, I still don't understand. Like, well, that portion of it would no longer be belong to the other 18,000 people that would be belong to you. Who, who made that decision to, to decide that you would sell it? That was basically the way we had talked from the beginning about trying to set up a solar farm so that those individuals who, for whatever reason, could not or didn't want to put solar panels at their own home had an opportunity to own solar panels in a, in a different place. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't think that's a co-op. Okay. I think it goes against being a co-op. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Okay, if no other comments, I'd like to uh, ask Jeff Couchman to come forward and announce the election results. We, the undersigned, the duly appointed inspectors of election of directors of the annual meeting of the members of Platte Clay Electric Cooperative Incorporated held its seventh day of May, 2015, do hereby certify that the election of directors was fairly and partially conducted, that we received the votes of the members cast by ballot and counted the votes, in, the votes cast, and the following members received the number of votes set opposite the representative name to wit. Kendall Davis, 254. John Graff, 114. We certify these results by our signatures below. Hey, thank you, Jeff. There's no other business to come before the uh, assembly. Declare the meeting adjourned. I think we're ready to give away some prizes. Oh, I do have a script here. Kids' prizes.
If we call your child's name, we ask that the parent or accompanied guardian please come up with the child to claim the prize. You will be asked to show your voter card, show the, just the card that you got, as you must be a Platte Clay Electric member in order for your child to be eligible to win. Fairness to everyone, your child will only be eligible to win one prize. Your child must be 16 years old or younger for all the prizes, with the exception of the boys and girls quad runners. The specific age group for eligibility for the quad runners is zero to five years old. As soon as we have verified that we have a winner, we will draw for the next prize. We appreciate your patience as we recognize the winners. Please, with the winners, please remain up front to the left of the stage for individual and group pictures after all the prizes have been awarded. Thank you and good luck. Okay, let's give away some prizes. Uh, first prize we have is an Xbox 360. Uh, Shannon Thomas. Shannon Thomas. Okay, come on up to the front. Congratulations. A new Xbox 360. The next prize is a Kindle Fire HD6. How about an Ivan B O O T H N? Okay. Sorry I couldn't read the writing there. That is for a Kindle Fire HD6. Okay, we've got a Samsung Galaxy Tab 4. Andrew Johnson, is he here? Okay, we've got another Samsung Galaxy Tab 4. Camden Haney. Are you Camden? Congratulations, buddy. Okay, the next prize is a Beat Solo 2 headphones. East, Easton Haggard. Is Easton here? Come on up. Okay, the next prize is a Beats Pill 2.0. Okay, William Crane. William Crane. William, are you here? Right over here. Come on up. The next two prizes are my favorites. We've got a boys and a girls Power Wheel Dune Racers. You see those right over here. Green. We're going to do the green one first. Uh, Barbara, Barbara Haney is the parent's name. It's for Li Lily. Okay. Okay, we have uh, for the next Dune Racer, Emma Graff. Emma Graff. Okay, it's time for the grand prizes. Uh, we'll do uh, the first grand prize of six months of electric service. Maximum value is $750. Oh, we have an iPad. Oh, I'm sorry. We have an iPad. We have an iPad for the director's booth. I'm sorry, I skipped right over that. Millie, A-L-L-E, A-L-L-E-M-A-G-N-G. -G. I'm sorry. Congratulations. Okay, six months worth of electric service, $750 maximum value. William Piney, William Piney. William, right over here. William, come on up. We're going to take a photo of you right up here with a check. Let's do right up in front of the stage, if we could, with that, please. Okay, the next six months, Amanda Stubbs. Amanda, are you here? Come on up to the front, and we'll get your photo taken. Congratulations. Okay, this is the grand prize, one year, $1,500 maximum value electric credit. 
Stephanie Seaball, Camden Point, Missouri. Right over here. Congratulations. That concludes our business meeting. Thank you for attending.